Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Luke, Eric, and myself are representing Trap Drive. Uh, we are a little bit special here. I think we are the only one trying to present a hydraulic transmission, not nothing to do with a gearbox. And we have two speakers. Uh, we are proud and excited to have this opportunity to share what we have achieved in hydraulic transmission, particularly for wind turbines. It is a new solution, and it is an integrated drivetrain solution based on the latest generation of hydraulic transmission. So resulting in a lightweight and multi-megawatt wind turbines. This is the agenda for our presentation today. First, we will introduce who we are and our company, company background, and then the market needs. And these are, the market needs will be our company targets. And we will introduce today's solution in the market. I think mm, they are well known to, to most of you. And then we will introduce what is our solution. And then the core part, that is the trap drive control system. And we will introduce a little bit about our uh, test turbines in Norway uh, measurements and our simulation results. And we will have our view of our company today and the future. And then we hope we have some interactive uh, question and answer. This is our company background. Uh, Trap Drive is formed by some leading scientists and product developers in hydraulic system and turbine technology from Norway, Denmark, and UK. Um, since 2004, we have already started the product and business development, but our company was founded in December 2006. Our headquarters and we have a workshop in, Nor in Norway, Trondheim. And we have also a subsidiary in Silkeborg, Denmark. We have two test wind turbines on site connecting to the commercial grid at Walfness near Trondheim, Norway. Uh, we will introduce a little bit further about these two test turbines a little bit later. And totally, we have around 22 employees in different countries like uh, Norway, Denmark, UK, and China and I'm stationed in Hong Kong, that is part of China. And we have a very strong financial situation, backed up by investors and also government bodies. And I will hand this uh, over to my colleagues because he has a very, well, better knowledge in our company history. Uh, I don't know if I have better knowledge or not, Paul. You have been with the company for some while. But uh, I joined uh, Chap Drive a little more than two years ago, and uh, it was a very interesting thing to join Chap Drive because when I came to Chap Drive, I saw this test site here. We have a test site two hours uh, drive west of Trondheim in Norway, where there are two turbines operating with our chap drive uh, technology. And we have there a 225 kilowatt machine and a 900 kilowatt machine running with our technology. And they have been running there for two, hour, two years. That's extremely interesting, all the data we have collected from this site here. Then uh, our headquarter is also in Trondheim here in Norway, and uh, here we have our headquarters uh, where we have our offices and nice place, but what's even more interesting is our collaboration with the Norwegian State Railway, because here we have workshops, and in these workshops we have rebuilt the turbines we have on site here. They have been rebuilt with hydraulic transmissions in these uh, facilities here, and the environment there is extremely interesting for doing things with hydraulic transmission and synchronous generators because they maintain all the locomotives for uh, cargo trains in Norway so there's a amount of skilled very skilled workers in this area that knows about reliability and how to handle synchronous machines how to handle hydraulics diesel engines etc very important for our development work 
And then we have the facilities in Denmark, uh, where we are six people employed out of the 22. We are in the company altogether. And these uh, people here are mainly from the wind turbine industry, because when I joined up here, we needed to add some more uh, wind turbine competences to the company. So that's the reason we have the six persons here in Silkeborg. And Paul Chang, he is looking at the market and based in China. And I'll come back when we're talking about the chat drive control system later. Mark and Nitz, I think all of us here have a common target to reduce the cost of energy. And these are the um, efforts we have been paying very much in order to re achieve the lower cost of energy. And this is what chapter I thinks, the ways to reduce the cost of energy. The first thing we are we are working on is to reduce the top head mass. Top head mass, I think all of us uh, have the same definition, is uh, the total mass above the tower, including the drivetrain, rotors, main shafts, everything above the, the tower. And with this, with our new design, we have uh, reduced a lot in the top head mass. And top head mass, as uh, this morning uh, introduction or presentation, that will that is related to the capital investments. And then higher reliabilities. We have uh, less critical components, so that means we have uh, fewer or less uh, operation and maintenance expenses. We have uh, better serviceability. We will come to uh, this later on. And with the latest generation of hydraulic transmission, that is a digital valve technology, we can optimize or maximize the efficiency at all low levels. And we are using synchronous generator, so we, with all the combined and optimized control, we can achieve a very high quality in grid and st stability. And we can control the uh, rotor speed at optimum speed, always at all wind condition, because we can vary the transmission ratio, as uh, the previous uh, presentation uh, or our speakers uh, presented earlier. And we also have a good opportunity to make multi-megawatt lightweight wind turbine without adding excess cost. Yeah. <coughs> that is our features. And then today's solution in the market, that is what we see. These two are the basic uh, solutions, or two lines of solutions we are working today. Conventional gearbox and uh, direct drive solutions. What we see here, we have, uh, uh, they have three common areas. The first thing is they have a fixed transmission ratio. Transmission ratio means the rotor speed to the uh, generator speed. For gearbox, it is a fixed transmission ratio. For example, a three megawatt, it is some, something around one to 100. And for direct drives, yes, of course, it's fixed. To achieve the optimal rotor speed, we are using frequency converter to control the rotor speed at, at, uh, at uh, wind, uh, all wind speeds. This is done after the generators. And the third common area is they all need a transformer. <coughs> then what is our solution? We are using a hydraulic transmission system to replace the gearbox, the frequency converter, and we don't need a transformer. We are a fully hydraulic transmission uh, drivetrain. We don't need any gearbox here. But what is the transmission? What is a hydraulic transmission then? A hydraulic transmission is um, is a closed-loop system. The rotor will drive a low-speed hydraulic pump, and the oil from the pump will drive the high-speed hydraulic motor. And the hydraulic motor is a variable displacement motor. 
That means we can change the transmission ratio between the rotor speed and the generator speed. And the generator speed is always at its optimal running speed for a, five, for a 50 hertz uh, grid, which means always run at 1500 RPM. And here we can see the rotor speed control is done before the generator. So that means, and in other words, the generator speed does not have to change. But we have a variable transmission ratio done by this hydraulic transmission. And we can vary the transmission ratio. For example, a three megawatt turbine at low wind speed is something around one to 300. And at non-middle power or rated power, it is something like one to 100. And we can change the transmission ratio fast and easy. We Trap Drive offers a unique alternative keyless solution. Uh, sorry for this, because I think we are creating a lot of enemies here. <laughs> but, uh, but that is our concept. This solution, we elim eliminate. We don't need any gearbox. We don't need any frequency converter. And we don't need any transformers. And with less critical components and investment, we have less capital expenditure and uh, operation and maintenance exp uh, expenses. Because of the uh, high power density of hydraulic transmission, we have uh, lowest top head mass. Uh, we can reduce the cost of energy up to 20% if uh, we have uh, some upscaling model to, uh, to, to, to uh, verify this. And as we just uh, introduced, we have uh, two years field test measurement uh, and also with continuously improving results of, uh, of our transmission system. These two components, electrics and gearbox, um, we think, and from the statistics, we find, for example, electrics, that means uh, frequency converter, they have a higher failure rate, uh, but the days to, uh, to take care of the failure is less. But for gearbox, it takes a longer time to fix the failure. So that means these two components has the most downtime. And for trap drive solution, we, are, we have addressed these two components by eliminating them out of the uh, drivetrain. This is our, our latest development in trap drive. Totally integrated drivetrain solution with the latest generation of variable hydraulic transmission. That means a digital valve control. We integrated the drivetrain together with the hydraulic pump, the hydraulic motor, and the generator is fully integrated, totally enclosed, without any problem of alignment. And um, yeah, and we also integrated the main shaft with the pump shaft. Efficiency. We must admit that hydraulic transmission has uh, lower efficiency. I mean, the drivetrain efficiency because of the energy conversion. Uh, comparing to the conventional uh, drivetrain solution, we are somewhere around two to three percent lower than these two drivetrain solutions. But we are offset by different or various uh, benefits from the hydraulic transmissions. For example, the, um, we, we, we have less critical components we have less weight and we have less cost. Yeah. All the potential wear paths in our drivetrain can be serviced without external crane. For example, the hydraulic pump parts, hydraulic motors, and generator can be serviced inside the nacelle without external crane. And the pump here, the pump can be turned to a vertical position for better service or inspection, or inspection. Sorry. Only those 
critical structural parts has to be, uh, we need external lifting crane. So that means the cost or downtime is uh, reduced. As I mentioned before, hydraulic transmission has higher power density. Um, we have compared to the uh, less top head mass uh, wind turbines available existing on the market. This is our result. The trap drive solution, the top head mass is roughly approximately 110 ton. Permanent manage is around 140, and gearbox solutions 170. That is uh, three megawatt and rotor diameter 100, 100 meters diameter. That is how we compared. That is our upscaling uh, model in uh, trap drives. This blue line is trap drives hydric uh, solution. The green line is the electromagnetic direct drives. Uh, that means few excited uh, permanent magnet direct drives. So we see uh, the, the red line is the traditional gearbox and the purple line is the permanent magnet direct drives. As we can see, the difference between top head mass is getting bigger when the turbine size is getting larger. That is what we see our advantages, yeah. So the trap drive control systems, that is the core part of our technology, and I handle this uh, most important part to Mr. Klug Eric Thompson. This, <coughs> this, of course, is an important part, uh, and this is one of our core competences in trap drive, that is our trap drive control system and a complete understanding of what is a turbine and how should you operate it in the best way to have the lowest load and the highest energy uh, yield from the wind. So this is where we have put a lot of emphasis to try to understand how should we create a variable uh, hydraulic drivetrain in order to achieve that. Um, but it's relatively easy because we just had a presentation explaining what's the advantages of a synchronous generator. So let me try to repeat from the previous presentation. The chap drive control system. Uh, the chap drive control system is actually the complete control system of a complete wind turbine. That means if you have a uh, cabinet here, it contains all the stuff that is controlling the turbine, the yaw system, the pits, etc., etc. But the most important three handles that you have when you are controlling a turbine in order to control your energy yield and in order to control your loads of the turbine, that is, in our case, uh, these three uh, handles here. That is the pitch control, where we are controlling the pitch of the blades. That is the displacement control, where we control the displacement of our high-speed hydraulic unit. That means the hydraulic motor, which again is controlling the uh, transmission ratio between the uh, rotor shaft and the generator shaft. And then it is the ex excitation control of the generator, where we can control the voltage when we are connecting it to the grid, and afterwards we have full control over the active and reactive power. So as Paul showed you before, we have completely removed the frequency converter, and the frequency converter has been the unit that normally took care of all uh, reactive power control towards the grid. But here we can use a traditional synchronous generator that has been used in the power production industry for many, many years, and we can have full control over that. So this is our chap drive control system handling these, uh, taking care of these three handles here. In order to have an optimized control system, you need good and complete understanding of all the dynamics uh, behavior of the turbine itself. And that is in chap drive in-house competences. So we have uh, built up inside competences in the complete dynamic modeling of the turbines. That means we have models of the blades, the, the rotor, the pitch system, the yaw system, and uh, in, if there should be any case of yaw errors, etc. 
also the wind conditions, the sea state, and here we have what we ha have influence on, that is the jet drive control system and the hydraulic drivetrain. That is the new components. A lot of you will have be quite familiar with all the other models here. But here we have created new models, especially for the hydraulic drivetrain, and of course our own developed jet drive control system here. And how are we doing that in jet drive? Uh, we have uh, computer models. We uh, use MATLAB Simulink as a basic tool, and then we have uh, complete uh, turbine models. We are using Internally, we are using Gerhard Hans plated for complete uh, dynamic analysis of the turbine and in order to create all our load calculations. So we have a load, calculate, load document that we can use for our mechanical uh, construction. When you are going into a new field where you are going to create models uh, for something that has not been uh, used in the wind turbine industry before, of course there will be a lot of questions. How do we verify these models? How do we make sure that we have correct models of the hydraulics? Because that's something new. And in order to do that, uh, you can of course do shop floor tests, and we have done that in the beginning, but for the last two years we have actually had operating turbines at Valsnes where we can verify our two turb or, or where we can verify our models. And uh, when we have done our computer simulations here in MATLAB Simulink, plated, etc., then we do measurements from our turbines at our test site. We have two turbines running with this uh, variable hydraulic uh, transmission. We have got a 225 kilowatt machine and a 900 kilowatt machine. And uh, we have measurements from these. We compare them with our simulations, and then, of course, we tune our model, and then we optimize our model so we have a better and better model of the, our dynamic behavior of the turbines. To show how that works, um, there's then, let's see here we are using the data from, from the turbines, and in this case here, um, you can see we have a, an illustration of our uh, system here. And um, over here, we are having a data series. And the first one is the first green ones here. The green ones is showing what we actually have measured uh, at this time here on our site here. It's from May last year. There we have measured these two time series for the torque and uh, for the displacement. And we measure these two, and we put them into our model, and then we compare the output of our simulation model uh, together with the measurements we have in the field. And we can see that uh, the blue lines here is our measured time series, and the red lines is the output from our simulations to compare them and see if they fit together. And that's the tuning process we, of course, do. And therefore, we have our nice uh, data from our turbines for the last two years to optimize our models and make them work. Then we are talking about uh, the advantages. Now we actually can operate with a synchronous generator that the wind turbine industry has not been able uh, to do when it when the turbine in, it started out in with the wind turbine industry. But now we can actually we can uh, connect a, a synchronous generator to the grid and have it operating st steadily. The main handles again here is uh, uh, pits the displacement, and the displacement again means our transmission ratio and our excitation control over the, of the uh, synchronous generator. And what we see up here is that we are having the wind speed fluctuating here, and the final result is actually down here. That is our power output when we connect it, uh, when it's above rated wind speed. First, we have a synchronization, and uh, then we connect it to the grid. Here we have zero power, it is connected. There are no power spikes. Uh, it's easily and smoothly connected to the grid, uh, just by closing the, the breaker to the generator, and we are connected to the grid. Then we have full control over the torque, and we can then ramp up the power uh, with the speed that we would like it to be, and then we reach uh, our nominal power, and we keep the nominal power constant here. So that is what we are doing here. And up here, we can see how we operate the pitch angle, and how we operate, we, how we let the rotor speed just run up in a while here, because we just use it as a flywheel, because it actually doesn't matter that much how much the rotor speed is, because by uh, 
controlling our transmission rate, rate you hear during connection to the generator, we can keep the speed constant and 1500 RPM connected to the grid and afterwards add some torque and thereby ramp up the power to the nominal uh, power we want to have. So that is how we are able to connect it to the grid. So it would have been nice if we could do that back in the 1980s, but uh, now we can. Um, If we look at the power quality again, here we are, can see that we are, um, we are again, uh, this here we are up at uh, 20 meters per second and we have some extremely high uh, wind costs here. And uh, here we are actually seeing that we have a constant power output here. And if we didn't have this very, very fast control over the displacement and thereby the, the transmission ratio, then we would have seen power spikes maybe up in this area here. So this is how we can keep it completely constant by the very, very fast control over the uh, displacement control. And we can control that within, within milliseconds. We have full control over the displacement and thereby the uh, transmission ratio. You can see here the pitch angle is keeping the average uh, power that is put into the shaft at a certain level and uh, we have here the faster uh, transmission uh, ratio uh, control and that again gives the power output we have here. The generator speed will of course be constant at 1500 RPM because it's a synchronous generator, it's connected to, a, to our 50 hertz grid and it's a four pole generator so that will be 1500 RPM as long as it is connected to the grid. What I have shown now, that is mainly how it is controlled when we are running above rated wind speed. That means when we are up and we are having a lot of fluctuations in the wind and we have a lot of fluctuations in the, in the power normally and how we can uh, even that out uh, so we have eliminated all the fluctuations of the power above rated wind speed. But one other purpose of introducing variable speed into the wind turbine industry and, and why uh, actually the wind turbine industry started introducing variable speed was of course to increase the energy yield. That means that you were able to reduce the rotor speed at low wind speeds. And that's more a steady state uh, view of how you are operating your turbine. And <clears throat> Here, of course, we can also use our variable hydraulic transmission in order to control, in order to control uh, the uh, transmission ratio. And uh, that means that we can reduce the rotor speed at lower wind speeds. And that means that we would require a higher transmission ratio because we want to keep the generator speed constant. We want to keep the generator speed at its optimum speed, which is 1500 RPM. So here we have plotted the generator speed. In this case, we are looking at the generator when it's connected to the grid. We are plotting the, uh, the generator speed here, and it will always be 1500 RPM as long as we are talking about a four-pole generator. No matter what wind speed, as long as it is connected to the grid, it is 1500 RPM. Over here, that is actually our desired rotor speed and for a uh, 3 megawatt turbine then it would go maybe from 5 uh, rpm up to 15 rpm when we reach uh, rated wind speed and uh, above rated wind speed we would keep it at 15 rpm that is the wish for the rotor speed at a 3 megawatt turbine for a 6 megawatt turbine we might go uh, down to 10, 11 RPM or, or something like that at rated wind speed and again down at lower wind speed. And for our test turbine, the small turbine we have, one, one of the two test turbines, we are running with this uh, curve here. So we are up approximately 45 uh, RPM at, at rated wind speed and we are going down to 15 RPM at low wind speeds. In order to do that and keep the constant uh, road speed over here, we are adjusting the gear ratio. And you can see for a three megawatt turbine, it would be, as Paul mentioned earlier, approximately uh, one to 100 when we are above rated wind speed at nominal power. And then it would go up to maybe one to 300 when we are down at low wind speed. So that is how we are operating the turbine. And for a six megawatt turbine, we would actually be talking about uh, gear ratios or transmission ratios up to one to 350. And that can easily be handled by the hydraulics. 
So again, the result is that we have high energy yield from the wind because we can optimize our transmission ratio uh, depending on the wind speed, and we can make sure that we have low loads on the turbine structure because we can do fast uh, adjustments of the displacement and thereby the transmission ratio and reduce uh, fluctuations in that. So that's how the system works. Chapter, where are we? Where have we been and where do we expect to be in the future? As Paul mentioned before, we are a venture company and we are therefore uh, have been in a fast development process. Here we started back in 2005, the first ideas came up with a couple of professors meeting and they said, well, let us uh, do this hydraulic transmission for wind turbines. They, back in 2005, built a workbench for 50 kilowatt. Then afterwards, they built a, a test uh, bench in, in the workshops, uh, as I showed you before, a 300 kilowatt. Then a 225 kilowatt turbine was built in order to test it in the field to have real data because it was such a new uh, technology, it was desired to have some field experience from that. Then uh, the 900 kilowatt uh, turbine was built in order to focus on at least something that was in the megawatt range, so it was not just a small test stand on the shop floor. And this has been running also for two years now. And then we have had uh, several projects together with uh, Statoil in Norway because uh, actually the reason for creating Chapter was to look at offshore wind turbines and especially floating wind turbines. And there has been a lot of local focus on a solution here where we have that located on the ground. But what we see now is that we will now challenge to get a product in the market where we in the three megawatt range can show something very integrated as we have heard several presenters do today. Something extremely integrated in nacelle, as a nacelle solution with a uh, uh, variable transmission. And that is our, what we are working on right now and when we are securing funding and support for, that is to design uh, this uh, unit here and put it into a turbine. That is where we are uh, today and how we see the future. We call it chapter solution. That is a perfection via simplicity. We are uh, getting, eliminating the gearbox we are eliminating the power electronics. We have a hydraulic low speed unit, a variable hydraulic high speed unit, and that is our simple solution as we see it. And we believe that we can create it with the highest power density and the low top hest mass. And uh, we believe also that we can achieve significant cost reductions. And we have demonstrated the concept in turbines for two years, so that is where we are today. Hey.